Hello, my name is Sarah Ashley. I'm one of the instructional designers with the Biomedical and Health Sciences campus of Rutgers University. We started using Moodle 1.9 in 2012 where we migrated from Angel to Moodle and this fall we'll be migrating to Moodle 2.8. Our faculty, staff, and students have been using the database activity in various creative ways within their courses, and um, I'm hoping to share some of these uses with you today. Now, the database activity is really very, very adaptable. It's one of Moodle's most powerful tools, and it's, it can be used in academic courses, non-academic courses, uh, in group format, in single individual student format for private work. It can be portable, being it can be shared across a site or exported to a different site, and it's just really, really easy to adapt to various situations within um, your learning environment for your course. Students can use it in a public or private environment together with other students uh, in a group work. And one way that our students in the medical school are using it is for submitting journals in their rotation class. So each student is in a group by themselves with their advisor, and it's a private submission st um, system where the student uploads their journal and then the advisor gives them feedback. Uh, it used to be a system of 10 different assignments, one assignment for each rotation. So there are files all over the place. You go here for this and over here for another piece of it. Um, but the database has replaced these 10 assignments with just one link. Cleaner interface on the course page and everything can be found in one location by the student as well as by the advisor. And when they come into um, the database, the, the student and the, and the advisor can see all the entries by that student on one page and it's easy to identify that they have completed all the requirements for a specific rotation, can see all the different types of submissions, whether it's a journal or an early case and all that. And when you click on a particular entry, you can see all the details that the student has entered for that particular case. And the advisor can also upload a feedback file back for the student. Uh, there's ability to add comments on a particular entry and have a whole discussion centered around an entry. And when the student is adding their entry to the database, it's just using simple form elements that everyone is um, used to. Open up a menu, select an option, um, click browse to browse to their computer and upload a file, um, you know, select a radio button here and there. Everything is very easy for the students to manage. Um, another way that uh, academic uh, in an academic environment, students can use it is to build um, a web page together, just web HTML content. Okay, a student can do it individually or they can do it as a group where each student uh, in a member of the group has a different piece of the page together. Uh, another way that they can use it is in a non-academic setting for community service where they log their entries for each um, community service hour or activity that has been completed. And the JavaScript template in the database activity allows you to put code that can add up, you know, all the different hours in the column for um, the community service hours. Now the teachers in the medical school have a workflow system where they have a course manager approve documents that will be used as lecture materials in the course. And so what happens is the, the course manager will look at the entries for each lecture period entered by different instructors and use the check mark on the right there circled um, to approve the entry. And once it's approved, then it becomes visible to the student. Um, and you can look at a different detailed view of each entry for each lecture period, see the descriptions, whether it's a, a file that's uploaded or it's a website. Uh, the course manager approves all of this by clicking the uh, little check mark at the bottom. If it's not approved, it's not visible to the students. And so they build their course materials um, in that manner. Another way that the database activity is being used is by staff. Um, our help desk that uh, takes calls for Moodle and other programs um, uses the database tool to track 
the status of each ticket. So they can escalate, you know, a call to a particular staff person and that person would go into the ticket, resolve the issue, and then, you know, complete all the required steps for resolving the ticket. So at a glance, you can see what's happening with each um, request. and. This, these reports can be exported at the end of the semester into an Excel spreadsheet for a detailed view of what's going on with Moodle support. So how does it all work? Well, when you add the database activity to your course as an activity, you put in all the settings, right? Whether it's being graded, if you're going to use the approval system, are you allowing comments, and all those settings, you put them in. And then once you save that, you then have to decide what information are you going to collect in this database activity? You know, are you providing a file browser for them to pick a file from their computer? Are you giving them radio buttons, check boxes, drop down menus? Everything that you need, you just build from this page. And once you've selected what you need to collect, then you have to decide how should it look like for each page. So the list view, you know, where you have all the rules of all the different entries, how should that look like? When you're looking at a single entry, what should it look like? And when they're adding files and adding the entry, what should it look like? You can put in images, you can format the text with color, tables, everything that you want. And when you are actually creating the list template, for the list view, you, you need to turn off the HTML editor so that you can have better control over the tables um, and the styling and formatting of the page. It makes it easier. Okay. Now, after you've built the, the database and it's ready for entries to be put in, you can actually package it in such a way that it can be shared. You export it as a zip or you can save it as a preset. When you export it as a zip file, you can give it to someone to put up into a different Moodle site. Okay. Uh, saved as a preset would be on your Moodle site across all the different courses on the same site. People can reuse it by either uploading the zip file that you provided like I have done in my course for this presentation. I've provided um, preset zip files for all the different examples I've provided. You can um, upload them into your Moodle site and um, use that as a starting point for building your own activity or uh, use them just as just the way that they are. So please do go into that course and if you have any questions, please feel free to post in the discussion board that's there. Let's talk and let's get creative with the database activity. I hope that this has inspired you to take that to a different level. Thank you.